good. Okay, thank you for this invitation to talk here. Good afternoon, everyone. It's my great pleasure to be here to talk to you today. And uh, yeah, it's been a really great meeting so far. I've been happy to attend several sessions. I'd like to shift gears a little bit from the science talks and talk about the European ARC Network, which is one of the organizers of this meeting, which is the organizer of this meeting, and tell you a little bit more about how the European ARC Network is set up and also what we can do to support your ALMA science. So let me start by telling you a little bit about how ALMA is organized in terms of um, user support. The ALMA, just let me move my picture. The ALMA region, the ALMA you heard yesterday is organized, well, is the result of three original projects that later merged. And so it is organized in so-called regional centers, which we call ARCs. They are acting as the interface between the user communities, that is all of you, and the observatory in ALMA itself. Each of the three original partners, which we've heard, we refer to as executives, have their own ARCs. And so there is one in Europe, which is ESO, one in North America, which is the NASC, and one in East Asia, which is NAOJ. The ARCs stand a bit in between. They provide service to ALMA operations in Chile. So they, for example, observe, they go to the telescope, they provide the tools, they develop some of the tools like the ALMA-OT and many others. But also they serve, the ARCs serve as an interface to the science community itself to make the most out of ALMA's capabilities and to support the community in using ALMA, you know, uh, even if they're not experts, so to speak. As such, the ARCs are really that close link. I'm sorry. Are close. For some reason, I seem to be in player mode. I'm sorry. The slide just moved. There are the, um, the ARCs are a link between um, the DSO in Chile and, and all of science. OK, so we already, already saw the next slide. This is what it looks like on the map. You have the three big dots are the three ARCs, one in East Asia, one in Europe, and one in North America. In Chile, you have. Um, in Santiago, you have the joint ALMA office, the JAO, and the actual telescope ALMA is in the north of Chile in the desert of Atacama. The way flow goes, in principle, here you have the green arrows are the proposals that come from the community, the ideas, and then once um, it's observed, it will the data will be first stored in an archive at the JAO and then copied to three identical archives which are the three executives. These are mirrors of the original archive, which is at the JAO. So this is the idea of the ARC. I would like to now introduce the ARC nodes. The European ARC is the point of contact between ALMA from proposal submission to the distributed of the data, but the ARC node in Europe is organized further into a network that provides scientific support across Europe. The central node is ESO, as I mentioned before, and carries out all the core activities. It also coordinates the regional nodes. The ARC nodes have independent funding, however, and are not dependent on, on ESO. And we all work in collaboration with ESO EU ARC. Um, just a second. Sorry, somebody is knocking at the door. I don't know if you can hear it. Okay, so this is what it looks like uh, from like as I showed you before, and I would like to highlight that if you look carefully in Europe, we don't just set the ESO node, we have a series of dots. I'm sorry, somebody's knocking at the door. I'm just going to be back. Okay, I'm back. All right, so we have the arcs and the arc nodes. So this is what it looks like. I'm just gonna summarize what I said before. We have the joint ALMA observatory, which is the JAO. And within the JAO works in collaboration with the three arcs. The three arcs take part in the operations, but also outside is the user support part of thing, the scientific support. The arc nodes are related to the to ESO and to the UARC. 
and work is a kind of interface more on the user support side of things, but also involved in the operation side. And if you look at the list here of what services are provided, you'll see here on the left is the JO services are more operations oriented, scheduling and running of projects, making sure that the observations are efficient. Oh, I'll just switch this off. Yeah. Uh, the, the observations are efficient and that the quality is always assured. You always make sure that you get good data. You know that you've gotten good data in all of the cases and the pipeline and you know the archive operations are carried out as they should. The arcs and the nodes provide also some core tasks, but also are more dependent on talking, you know, this, uh, interfacing with the user community. Okay. Let me tell you just a little bit about the history, how this came about to be. The ARC nodes are, were conceived as an experiment that turned out to be a good experiment, a positive experiment. A distributed user support was favored already in 20, 2002 in an Alma community day. And shortly thereafter, when this was approved, six institutes replied with national funding to support this idea. A little bit later in 2009, also before Alma first started delivering data, the Czech node also joined and there are now seven ARC nodes in Europe. There's been external reviews since. This has been deemed um, exceedingly positive and strategic plan um, was made in 2019. It's still ongoing until 2025 and it was up for review in, in the near future. What is the mission of the ARC nodes? A personalized face-to-face -face support is the biggest success and it's the biggest goal of the European ARC network. The idea is to have nodes that are embedded within the community and easy to reach with the community as such as to form a, a sense of community as well within Europe. The support of the nodes is in, indeed face-to-face, -face, but it also, did, well, it also expected to, to provide scientific and technical expertise. And then a little bit later, I'm gonna tell you a lot about the expertise of each node or highlight some of the expertise as you see of each ARC node in Europe. These are just some examples. We personalize our services, depending on what people need and the level of what people need. But we're also involved in general ALMA development in collaboration with ESO and of course with the JAO. This distributed system comes with strengths and some challenges. The fact that there's a geographic distribution of nodes, of course, makes communication a little bit trickier and requires the use of some technology to support that communication. As we know in Europe also, and having different nodes and in different institutes, there will be also cultural and interpersonal differences. And so this again relies on really careful communication and you know, kind of putting an effort on that and also to develop a common aim and a shared sense of responsibility while you, of course re respecting our unique organizations. Also weakness and a strength is the fact that because we have different organizations and funding schemes, we don't all operate in the same way. And this has been a good thing in terms of society, but it's also creates some challenges in knowing how to work together. And you know, when things change from one node to the other, we need to be able to also take that into account. And so this is the high level perspective of the ARC network. I think is this coming into view from what I've been telling you so far. Of course, the, higher, the first and most important is to create support to our users, to our communities, to strengthen that sense of community within countries and across different um, ARC nodes. So creating a sense of community is really important. It's not just technical support, but it is that, that you know, common goal, that common sense of community. One of our higher level goals is also accessibility to make Alma accessible to non-experts and to all types of users. And internally, of course, we're interested to participate and provide assistance to Alma 
in the commissioning organization and into the tools that Alma provides. So how do you, as a user, get information about Alma? There are three main sites that all the Alma users need to have. I wouldn't say even bookmark because by then you should probably not type them by heart. The first most important tool page you need to know is the science portal. It's almascience.iso.org or almascience.nrio.edu and et cetera. All three executives share exactly the same science portal. It's always up to date. It has news, it has updates. It has the tools here. If you go here on the list, if you click on here, you will get the AMAUT and a number of tools that you need. It will um, tell you if things change about the proposal, about what, what is offered at each proposal, et cetera, et cetera. So that science portal, I cannot, you know, I cannot underline more how important it is to be stay connected to the science portal. I would like to also advertise the, the joint AMA observatory website, which is really nice as well. It has, uh, it collects, it's uh, kind of more of a Chile-based website, but it collects information for the three executives. It also collects uh, press releases from the three executives. So you know what kind of science has been done all around the world. And it shares some pictures. There's a lot of really nice outreach uh, information as well there. So it's also worth visiting. And it's also maintained and always very, up, very active and up-to-date. And finally, number one again, because it's last but not least, we have the help desk, and I'm going to get to this. This is one way, one of the easiest ways, maybe fastest, more centralized ways to get to the ARC nodes. So if you want to contact the ARC node, one of the first places you can go to is the help desk, and it's linked here, and it's linked through other places. I'm going to get to other places in a minute. So this is how you get first information, first stop, to know more about Alma, first three stops. Okay, so how does Alma support take place in practice? You can ask for support by the network. So here are the eight, um, the seven plus ESOG uh, ARC and ARC nodes. After you have received your Alma data, you can ask for face-to-face -face support. The first place to go is naturally the ARC node that your community this closest to your community or in the country where you're, where you're living. This is not the only place because it once you contact the help desk or one of us and you have a more specific um, problem, we can also you know, redistribute some of this expertise within the ARC node. But the first place to contact for face-to-face -face support is the ARC node that's closest to you. We also help not only if you've received all my data, but if you want to get all my data. For example, during proposal preparation, if you have any questions or any doubts, you should be contacting your ARC node. More recently, we spent quite a bit of time also on archival research. So if you have any questions on how to do research through the archive, that's definitely another topic that you should contact the, the ARC node about. Keep in mind that we provide support for computing resources at all the ARC nodes. Alma data is quite heavy, you find out by now. So you will, this is something the ARC nodes really can help with. We provide remote and on-site user support too. As I said before, you can contact us via help desk tickets, via the science portal, and the help desk system will forward your request to the relevant node. If you don't know which one is your relevant node, for example, or if you already know, or you already are in contact with the node, you can contact us directly. This is the page uh, here from uh, the ESO portal that links, uh, shows all the ARC node sites. Uh, and you can also find more information via this page. There's news and announcement, but also here there's a link, direct link to the Helm on my help desk. Keep in mind that the network doesn't only provide uh, support, but we also organize events, like for example, iTrain, that I hope many of you have already seen. There's a very useful information there. Workshop schools, and of course, this meeting has also been brought to you by the network. Okay, I'd like to introduce you to the seven art notes now, briefly. 
Um, I have a slide for each net network and I'd like to try and highlight some of the things unique to each node. A lot of um, expertise and a lot of support is common and the same in all the nodes, but some of them bring unique expertise. And so it's good to have just an overview about what we do. The first one I'd like to introduce is our node, is the Allegro node in the Netherlands. We serve the Dutch and Belgian community. Um, this is the website. If you would like to find out more, we also keep it up to date. And here's some picture of our group. I'm gonna bring show you pictures from all the groups as well. And our expertise are high frequency and long baseline observations, millimeter VLBI. We also started uh, collecting software tool database with information about which software is up to date and which one would be more appropriate for more advanced analysis. We have done quite a bit of work on archive mining uh, via um, Alminer. Here is the logo of Alminer and more advanced calibration techniques. By the way, Alminer is a um, archive mining and visualiz visualization toolkit that uses uh, Python and you can query and analyze and visualize your data directly. So to find out more, please visit our website. And also keep in mind, we have a March 28th um, proposal preparation workshop, which will be in person. And if people want to connect or cannot come, they'll be able to connect hybrid um, online in a hybrid form. More information on our website. Next node I'd like to introduce to you is the Italian node. It's based in Bologna. It's, um, it serves the Italian community. And, the exp and its expertise here again is pictures of the group. Expertise is millimeter VLBI as well. They've been, I think a couple of members are from the EHT as well. Polarimetry, also archive mining, hand handling large data sets and REL. REL is actually quite a nice, uh, a big project. It stands for additional representative images for legacy in the Alma archive. It was a development project from, for an Alma upgrade that was run in the past uh, couple of years. The idea was to increase the legacy of Alma science archive by re reducing cycles two to four data to the same level of quality of more recent cycles. And you can get those data directly from the REL group. You can get the re reduced MSs from them. More information on the website here. I'd like to highlight two of the upcoming uh, events uh, from the Italian node. There is a Cycle 9 Community Day on April 9, which will be online. And also from April 5 to 7, there will be an Alma Archive School, which will be taking place in Bologna. Um, this is also organized with many members of the network. And I'd like to you know, advertise it for those of you who are interested in archive. Um, research to keep an eye out because the announcement will be coming soon. Next, we move to France. Is the ERAM node in Grenoble. It serves three communities, the M MPG, the Max Planck Gesellschaft, France and Spain. This is the largest community they serve. It has expertise in data combination, short spacings. Of course, also Noema because the same group also is involved with Noema. CAS and GILDAS, VLBI, and instrumentation. They also have been, for many years already, organizing a school, it's the ERA Millimeter School, and there's another one coming out, um, coming up in, in the fall of 2022, so keep, you know, stay tuned for more on that. All right, so this was ERAM. Let's move on further north again, and there's the German node in Cologne and Bonn. It uh, serves a German, except for MPG, Austria and Switzerland. So the Dutch, the, the Dutch, the German speaking community. Its expertise is also millimeter VLBI. In fact, um, Stephanie is uh, coordinating the, the QA2 millimeter VLBI efforts. And also data combination, archive search, uh, CDMS, which is the Cologne database for molecular spectros spectroscopy, which is a catalog of atomic and molecular lines and advanced spectroline analysis tools. Here's an example on the bottom left from StatCons, uh, which uh, solutions overlaid on over a spectrum. And actually, if you look at it, 
you cannot tell apart uh, the spectrum from the solutions is really neatly done. So again, some pictures from the group. And if you want to find out more, please visit their website. On April 7, they also have a cycle nine AMA proposal preparation workshop, which will be online. I move further north to the Arc, Nordic Arc. Uh, serves the Nordic and Baltic countries. Its expertise is in polarization, total power observations, astrometry software tools, and a combination of different wavelengths uh, data. Also, it's uh, one of the first coordinators um, and motivators behind iTrain. He's been Carmen. And uh, this is, of course, something that you've all been exposed to, you'll see in the past, uh, the past year. They have uh, also two workshops coming up related to the proposal preparation and the proposal deadline that's in April. Um, there's on March 10th, Introduction to Interferometry, which will be online. And on March 28 to 30, they have a proposal preparation workshop, which is also online. More Wait information minute. again on the website. Okay. There's a check note. The check note is an... Um, yeah, uh, it serves the Czech Republic and many other Eastern countries, or I think all of them. The biggest expertise is the solar observations. In fact, there are solar experts, not only in Europe, but I think some of the solar experts worldwide. Um, they also have a big event coming up uh, on Alma Second Line Preparation, 14 to 15. I love the poster, so I just put it here. Um, and finally, last but not least, is the UK node in Manchester serves the UK um, and uh, they have expertise also in multi-frequency and wide field, high dynamic range imaging, data reduction heuristics. And of course, uh, very interestingly, and it's been, uh, I think there was also, um, I train on ALMA simulation, ALMA primer, et cetera, polarization. They recently had an event on CASA and interferometry, which you've missed. However, if you go on their websites, and it's listed through their own website. There is the event link. They have all the talks and all the slides there. So if people want, would like to know more, they can do that. Okay, that was the last art note. I hope you will remember all of them and you know who to contact with every question you have. Uh, just as a bottom, as a you know, final slide and summary, the arc and the arc nodes interface between the user and the observatory. And the idea is to have a close tie with our community and so we do look forward to communities getting in touch with us and in don't hesitate so to speak to get in touch with us i wanted to finish with this slide i really enjoyed the talk of leonardo testi yesterday where he talked about the alma project and how they had a vision which was ambitious and when they set out to observe these three you know first big milestones for alma what alma should be able to do this was incredible this was a vision this was something that was hard to achieve and already 10 years into alma i think we can say we've achieved all of them or at least we're coming very close and it's very beautiful to see you know especially after hearing him talk yesterday how this was a dream and this is thanks to the close collaboration of people the ALMA team who's built ALMA and supporting ALMA, but also thanks to all of you, the community, for believing in that vision and really making it true. So I would like to thank you for your attention and I look forward to taking your questions. Thanks, Violet. That was a great overview over the whole network. Uh, and also thank you for staying on time. <laughs> Very helpful. Um, I don't see any questions yet in the chat, so maybe I'll ask the first one. Are there any plans to increase the number of nodes? Because you said that some of them are serving quite big communities. Uh, not that I'm aware of, no. It, it's actually, um, I, it's, it, it's one question that I have, I think that's for the, it's true for the Iram node, um, that they are serving the largest community. But yeah, I, I'm not aware that they have any plans of splitting that. 